You see, I believe several things about the local church. And this, this is deep in my heart, and I truly believe. And if, if these assumptions are not clear with you, it may impact the way you live because it will not sustain. If you, if you are clear on these foundational assumptions, foundational uh, values, it will help you to lead the local church. The first thing I believe is that Seventh-day Adventist Church is not merely, I believe this, not merely a church, but a movement call for the end time. This is truly what I believe. We're not just a church. If we're just a church, it's just a role. I serve as an, a leader, an elder for a year, and thank you very much. It's a nice social club. See you later. No, this is a movement God has called for the final move. And the unique, there's, the things, there's something special about this church. We have a unique value proposition to the world, the everlasting gospel in the context of the three angels' message. We're not just any of denomination in the world. We're not just, we don't just have this uh, gospel of Jesus Christ without the context of the everlasting gospel. We have a present truth. We have a three angels' message to give to the world. It, no other church is called with that unique value proposition. You know, I used to work in software business for many years. And one thing I learned for sure is that if your software do not have a unique value proposition, it's very easy today for software developers to create new software, post it up as a freeware on the internet, and you'll be out of business in that software. So we must be clear what is our unique value proposition. We cannot be ecumenical. We cannot be like every other church. That's not our intention. God calls us to be a movement to proclaim this message. This is truly deep in my heart. I believe the local church is the hope for the world in this final generation. I believe in it. It is the apple of God's eyes. It is the bride of Christ. It is the future and, and uh, its future rests and primarily in the hands of leaders in the local church. That's why this course is so important because it is the leaders in the local church that galvanize the church members into the same direction, fulfilling the mission of Christ. The local church is the place where the rubber meets the road. But here's the challenge. The local church is also the most leadership-intensive enterprise. Sometimes the most hurtful, sometimes the most unforgiving, sometimes the most uh, um, the least gratitude you feel in this place, because it's a volunteer organization run by sinful men and women that are struggling to be sanctified. So we have issues like this in the local church. So how do we deal with that? How do we overcome these challenges? Well, if these four things are very clear in your mind, these four, I believe, it will help steal you up, help you firm you up in your commitment and direction as a local church leader. Now, what is the definition of leadership, you might ask me? What's a good definition of leadership? For this course, I'm going to use this definition. Leadership is managing change. That's what leadership is. Leadership is managing change. But here's the thing. The only constant in this world today is change. That means things are rapidly changing. You just have to look at, turn on the paper and turn on, or read your news on your on iPad, on your, on your TV. Things are constantly changing, even in the local church. But you see, a, local, a leadership is about managing this change and helping church to grow in four dimension areas, four very important areas. That's what leadership focuses on. All right? Let's study this. Let's give an overview of these four areas. The first one, leaders are to live, establish and live our core values. I talk about those four things I believe. Our values are so important. Values are non-negotiable. Non-negotiable. This is the things that, uh, that what we truly believe. This is what we stand for. Leaders are to establish and to live our core values. If leaders' values are not clear, then the people cannot go along with you in the same direction. You know what I mean? So for example, some of you have a desire to plant a church. And people say, hey, great, I like the vision. Let's go plant a church. But let's say your values for music is different. You want to plant a church that's using certain kind of music. People may like your vision, but they may not like your values for music. Do you understand? So you may have conflict in that area. You see, having a core value that is sound, that is biblical, that is spirit prophecy guided, is really, really important. Then people know what you stand for. People know what you value. Then people will follow that. Otherwise, if you are vacillating, you're changing your values all the time, it's really hard to follow leaders like that. 
it's important that leaders know and their values and establish it. The second thing is that leaders are to cast vision. Here's the word again. This is to share the vision. When I use the word cast vision, I don't mean to cast it so that we figure out what the vision. I'm saying that God gives the vision and we share the vision to the people that are around us, our leadership group, our church at large. They're going to build teams. They're going to lead change and make the difference. The third element of leadership is this. Leaders are to allocate resources and repair broken processes. There are some processes in the church that we're doing because out of tradition. We've just been doing year after year after year and we don't know why we're doing it. We don't have a clear outcome that we're trying to achieve. But leaders have to look at that and say, hang on, that process doesn't work too well. It is hurting people, it's confusing people, it's not efficient. We need to change that and reallocate the right resource to make this work. But finally, leaders know what the end game is in mind. Leaders have a picture of what the end game is. Begin with the end in mind, as Stephen Covey will say in Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. We need to know what is the picture. What can, they can visualize where the church ought to be in the two or three or four years' time. They have a picture of what the process look like. We, leaders know what the end game look like, and they're measuring, and they know how to measure the right things leading up to that direction. You see, sometimes we seem to be lazy in the local church. We seem to uh, have a conflict between the idea of being spirit-led versus being uh, organized and structured. Some people say, well, we don't need to worry about all that. The Spirit of God will lead us. We'll, we'll get to the right thing and we'll, we'll get there. It's almost like we stumble along and asking the Spirit of God to lead us. But my friends, the Spirit of God wants to lead us if we are disciplined in our own thinking and we are prayerful in our thinking and we use the mind that God has given us and lead and lead, really, too often we are just uh, lazy in spending the time. We spend so much time in our work, in our business, to plan this well, but in the church of God, we are lazy. And that is not a good process, not a good way of doing it. Jim Collins wrote a book called Good to Great. How does a company just not become a good company, but become a great company? And he wrote a section on social sector. This is the volunteer organization. This is what he's saying. Most business also have a desperate need for greater discipline. Mediocre company rarely display the relentless culture of discipline. Disciplined people who engage in discipline thought and who take discipline action. We find in truly great companies, a culture of discipline, listen carefully, a culture of discipline is not a principle of business. It is a principle of greatness. A culture of discipline is not a principle of business. It's a principle of greatness. So in the local church, there's really no excuse for us to treat God's church, the most important enterprise in the world that God has raised up for such a time as this, to finish this important work that God has placed upon His leaders. We need to bring the principle of greatness in our local church, covering uh, vision, processes, end game, and just a clear idea where our values are. The need for discipline taught Disciplined people with disciplined thought and disciplined action. In Romans chapter 12, verse 10 to 11, the Bible tells us, Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love, in honor preferring one another, and not what? Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit serving the Lord. God doesn't want our church to be slothful. Slothful means lazy, you know, mediocre. God wants a church of excellence. He wants His people to lead a volunteer organization with excellence. So, this course, we're going to learn about how to repair some of those broken processes. We're going to learn about how to form vision, how to develop that. And it's important that we learn this well. Let me give you a definition of vision and a definition of mission. There's two different things. There's sometimes some confusion in this area. And this is my working definition that might help you what I think is priority. Mission. Mission is like this verse in Matthew 28, verse 19 to 20. The Bible says, Go therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I command you, and lo, I am with you always unto the end of the earth and of the world. So uh, um, a mission is why God called the disciples to do what they're doing. It is their reason for existence, and that's what a mission is. Whereas a vision is Acts 1 verse 8. Jesus gave this instruction as well. 
but ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost will come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses, both uh, unto me, both in Jerusalem, in Judea, and in Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the world. So this is galvanizing us in a direction. It is a vision to go to Jerusalem, to Judea, to Samaria. It's, it has a directional thing about a vision. So let's contrast the two. The other things that you notice in the book of Acts as well is what we call values. If you study Acts chapter 1 and chapter 2, you see the values of the New Testament church. They were in one accord in prayer. Prayer, powered by prayer is a key value. They were witnessing, you know, they were so winning church. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. They were in the Word of God. They were in fellowship. They were in breaking of bread. They were self-sacrificial in sharing their goods and, and so on. So values are also found in the Bible. Vision, mission, values are in the Bible. So let's recap. What's the difference between vision and mission? Simple. A mission statement tells why we exist as an organization. It's purpose, the reason for existence. It does not change. It is the mandate God, the organization has. For example, the Seventh day Adventist Church exists to proclaim the three angels' message and prepare people to love and to witness for Jesus. So the idea of the Seventh day Church to proclaim the three angels' message is a mission. It's not a vision statement, friends. This is not a vision statement. This is just why we exist. But a lot of times people are confused. They think that this is a vision statement, but, in, but indeed it's not. It is a mission statement. A vision tells where the organization is going. It is where it's heading in the next few years. It's an organizational direction thing. It is compelling, it mobilizes, it harnesses the energy in the same direction. It has a time element. And after a certain time period, that vision would be renewed and changed. You see, if we don't are clear on this, you can see this vision statement X1 verse 8. It's very clear. It's got a direction. It's got uh, different places they're going to reach out to. And it's very clear vision. God has given for us. You know, Gateway as a church, uh, we also have to think this carefully. The reason why we write down our vision statement is so that everyone in the board and the church is clear, is clear where we're going. And we want to communicate this often in the church. And it's often when it's mentioned in leadership, mentioned in, uh, in ministry meetings. In 2000 to 2005, we had this vision statement. Okay, way is to create a focal point in the city. At that time, we haven't planted the church in the city, so we want to create a focal point in the city to share an everlasting gospel to young people and to train them to witness. This was our vision statement. But of course, in 2003, we planted our first church in the city. So we wanted to establish it. We wanted to make sure that we're training them for witness. But by the time we reached 2005, it was clear to us that we need to renew this vision. We need to renew this vision. And so we came up with another vision statement that says Gateway will be a soul winning and training center that multiplies churches. Gateway will be a soul winning training center that multiplies churches. And this is uh, uh, clear to us as leaders and we work towards this direction. We mobilize, mobilize the team in this direction. Church planting is an important element of our work and we praise God over all these years now we have four churches planted already. And because we multiply care groups, we, mul we multiply leaders first, multiply care groups, and then multiply churches. What an important step. Values is also important. We go away on the weekend to pray, and to uh, we have a prayer retreat approach where we will work through this, and we pray. And these are the core values of Gateway, to be Bible-based. Our belief and practices are founded on the Bible. Christ-dependent, seeker-oriented, discipleship modeling, training, accountability. These are the six core values that are important to our church. My friends, why is this important values? Why is it important to write it down? I can tell you, many corporate organizations realize that compensation is not enough to motivate their workforce. The, the organization needs to be doing something greater and bigger to change the world for a bigger cause. And, and they want to impart a value that the employees could resonate with and they want to work for that organization. Values are key even in corporate organization. But it's been there in the Bible since the book of Acts chapter 1 and 2. 
we write this down so that we are clear how we assess everything in our church. We assess our Sabbath school. Is it Bible-based? Is it Christ-dependent? Is it seek Do we have classes for seekers? We assess our worship. We assess our ministry. This is our core values help us to assess what our church is all about. And it's vital that we learn this. What about your church? Have you written down a vision, statement, a values in your local church? If you go to our website, you will find uh, what we call leadership prayer and planning retreat information where you can download and it'll give you an idea of how we run these retreats, how we run our workshop to share the vision together and to pray together to get the same values and agree on the values that are important to the church. It's an important resource and it will help you to develop those resources, in, uh, develop this vision and values. Many times as leaders, we may have a vision. You pray and God shows you a vision where you want to go and where the church should ought to go. But we, have, we struggle to bring the church along because we don't have a process of socializing the vision and imparting the vision. As we unpack Nehemiah, we will see the change management process on how to do that. You know, do you have a vision for your own life? You know, you know that question in interviews, people often ask you, in the next five years, what do you see yourself to be? Remember that question? And then we have to make up an answer when the interview, isn't it? But what truly is the vision for your life and your family? And the church. You see, as leaders, if you don't have a vision, without a vision, the people perish, the Bible says. So if you yourself don't have a clear vision and you're just rolling along life and you said, where do I go? Now, if you don't have a vision, how would you lead the church of God that needs a vision? If you don't have that disciplined person, disciplined thought, disciplined action, how would you lead God's church? God wants you to have a personal vision. At the back of your study guide, you will see a table that describes the, the areas. For me, writing a vision statement is a very simple process. I'm not into wordsmithing uh, one sentence for my life sort of thing. Yeah, there are certain things in my life that I, I notice that are important. For example, the word multiply is important in my life. Because that's who I am. God has put me to train and to multiply uh, workers. God has put that in my heart. Maybe for you, that could be a word for you, so for other words. But here's the point. The point I'm trying to get at is this. There are many categories in our life that we live in. Well, first thing is our spiritual. We are the child of God. That's our role. Write down what is your goal. What is your goal for your spiritual life? Do you have a goal? Do you have a goal to read through the Bible, perhaps? Do you have a goal, perhaps, to do verse-by-verse -verse study of certain books in the Bible? Do you have a goal to understand certain issues that you can teach these issues? What is your spiritual goal? Maybe you need to learn how to have devotional life better. Maybe you need to have a better prayerful life. Maybe meditation. Maybe, maybe certain Christian discipline. What is your goal this year for the next few years regarding your spiritual life? Do you have one? What about your family goals? Do you have a family goals for your family? What about your people group that you're serving? Do you have a goal for that? What about your health? What about your finance, your career, your learning, your hobbies and your travel? So for each of these different categories, what I normally do is just put some dot points. Take me a few weeks. I put some dot points. For example, uh, I like learning. So for example, I have a goal to read a book a month perhaps. Maybe you set that goal. A goal, a book a month. I want to read a book a month. Praise the Lord if you have that goal. Write it down. You see, nothing written down will not happen. Write it down. So I have this at the back of uh, like a Bible and I just review it every now and then. And sometimes I have to adjust it because it's not exactly the goal that is clear in my mind. But as I pray, as God show me what I should do in this area, God asked me to develop myself physically, mentally, socially, and spiritually. And God wants us to develop all dimensions in our life. And this is the areas that God wants us to write down. Yeah, have you ever write down what your personal goals is because this will this will give you a direction this will give you an idea what your vision could be so friends today i want you to take this worksheet this is the skill that you need to have is to work that out and write that in and may you prayerfully do this 
and let the Spirit of God guide you and direct you. In the next session, before you go, um, go to the next online class, I want you to read the church manual, the chapter on the church of the living God, because this tells you the mission and the purpose of God setting up the church. I want you to watch the second training video, and I want you to go through uh, the second lesson uh, on change management. Once again, I thank you for uh, coming along this journey with us. I pray that the more you put the time and effort to pre-study these things, our online class will be more effective as we work through these skills at the online class and deal with the question and answer. So I know you're time poor as leaders. You got lots on your plate. So I want you to watch this video, do the lesson separately and come to online class with lots of questions and lots of discussions and lots of learning to share with one another. I'm not the expert in leadership. But I know that among us, as we share, we could learn a lot of things together. So welcome on the journey. Look forward to, uh, to working with you and learning with you these next few sessions.